couple announcements. If you haven't registered on DevPost and you want to be part of the hackathon, make sure that you do, since that's going to be where you submit. I also will be sending some updates through DevPost as well for people who are registered, so you don't want to miss those. Um, we have the hackathon Discord, so go in there, make sure you choose a role. Uh, most people will be hackers. It's very important because that's going to allow you to see all the channels from our sponsors where you can have discussions, follow-up discussions after these sessions take place. And then we also have a hackathon info site. So we do, since we do use dev posts, it's not possible to include every single thing on there on the front page. So we created a site um, which has everything for every challenge all in one place. So I dropped that there as well. So check all that out. Make sure you have it all handy um, as you go into um, the hackathon and also into this session. Um, so we'll get started in just a moment. So um, are you ready to go, Rizal, or do you need any more time? I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, perfect. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. And today we're welcoming uh, Rizal from TBD, uh, which is part of Block, and she's going to go through their known customer credential challenge. Cool. Oh, go ahead, Rizal. Awesome. I want to make sure, what are y'all seeing on the screen? Is it just a slide that says known customer credentials, or can you see my old desktop? I'm just seeing the slide. Okay, perfect. That's what I want. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, let's jump into today's talk. Um, it's called Known Customer Credentials and Valid Reasons to Prove That You're You. Um, I like some interaction as well. Like when I do talks, it's more fun that way. So if you all are able to, feel free to type in the chat whenever I ask a question. So first things first, one of the most um, one of the things I'm most proud about is that last year I bought a house. So I would like to know from y'all type in the chat something that you're proud of. But I won't like I'll, I'll go back to the chat after just in case um, like there's like a little bit of a delay and I'll keep talking. So this was a big milestone for me as most of my life I spent like living in like a one bedroom with like my mom and my sister. So I'm like, oh my gosh, now I have like my own house. It's a colonial, it has four bedrooms. It has, it's a one um, family home. It got it upstairs and downstairs. I've been super excited about that. All right, let me see the chat. Somebody said they're really proud that they started a business. Good job, I'm proud of you for that too, Maple. Um, so one thing though that I noticed, oh, and Lamar said organize this hackathon. Yeah, ha a hackathon can be very, very difficult to organize. <laughs> so I'm proud of you for that too. Awesome. <laughs> well, the home buying process can be very predatory at times, right? There's definitely a few times I got played a little bit, right? Like for example, when I first looked at the house, they told me I will have be able to they're like, this is a new build, so you can customize anything you want. And I was like, yay, I can't wait. And then when I put some money down on the house, they're like, no, we never said that. This house comes as is. And I was like, oh, excuse me. And then another example is they told me that like the close date or the date that I could officially move in has to be in April. They're like, there's no like negotiations. I was like, that's fine. But they kept moving it. They moved it from April to May to June. And the, that was fine with me. But the only problem was every time they moved it, I had to pay a fine. Okay. So there's some more people. Chris said he started a startup. Good job. That's awesome. And Tanya said moved out finally after taking care of my folks. That's so awesome. I'm proud of all of you guys. Good job, good job us. All right, so I'll keep moving forward. However, right, I told you about the ways they played me, but they made sure I couldn't play them, right? I had to fill out a whole bunch of paperwork and provide tons of documents that proved like different things about myself. I had to give them my driver's license, my pay stubs for over a year, my bank account statements for over a year, my work permit, so even though they didn't have to stay true to their word, they're like, let's see your documents to make sure you're who you say you are. And on the surface, I thought, okay, this is simply to um, make sure that like I'm 
showing my identity that I am who I say I am. But as I've learned more working at TBD, they were probably doing a process in the background called KYC. And KYC stands for know your customer. KYC goes beyond, wait, and I want to make sure, just double checking again, like you all can see, not my speaker notes, right? No, I don't see speaker notes. Okay. Cool, cool. Because it like, it like highlighted the speaker notes and I was like, <gasps> okay, cool. Going back, right? <laughs> so um, as I was saying, this is, they were doing a process called know your customer KYC. And KYC goes beyond just um, verifying your identity. It's basically a procedure that is basically applied to various situations and industries to provide, I mean, or to prevent identity theft, financial fraud, money laundering, and terrorist finances. So in the case of me buying my home, they wanted to make sure, yeah, that I say I am who I say I am, but they also wanted to make sure that I uh, I live where I actually said I live, that I could actually afford the home, that my source of income is coming from a reliable, trustworthy place, that I also don't have like some kind of criminal record or have like financial issues with bankruptcy and that I'm not involved in bribery, right? And it wasn't just that. They didn't just do that initial check. They continued to monitor me um, to make sure there was no suspicious activity going on. And I know this because I got a huge bonus from my job. I put it in my bank account. I was like, hey, I got money for doing well. And then like my loan officer and a whole bunch of people called me and they're like, uh, what's going on in your bank account? We don't know where you got that money from. So I had to explain and show proof that like, oh no, this is not like anything scary or sneaky going on, nothing suspicious. I just did good at my job and here's proof of that. Um, and this process, they have to be very careful about it because it helps loan officers and um, real like the sellers and the real estate agents and everyone involved in that whole real estate process stay safe and compliant. So real estate is one example that I gave you all that uses KYC, but I'm curious from you all if there's other organizations you can think of that use a KYC process or procedure um, to ensure their compliance and meeting regulations. So I'm gonna wait in the chat and then I'll share a couple with you all. Let's see what you guys got. Oh, you all are just laughing at <laughs> my bonus. Okay. <laughs> Banking, education, healthcare, yep, exactly. Those are some of the ones that I wrote down. So I wrote down um, other industries that use this are like banks, insurance, fintech, um, even gambling, um, like casinos for gambling, art dealers and all of that. Um, Tanya said, those are the same ones I know of offhand. Uh, thank you, Kim. <laughs> So, so we learned about KYC in the real estate process and how it was a little bit funny for me. Um, and then we learned so far about different industries that also use KYC. So before we go any further, I'll quickly introduce myself. My name is Rizelle. I'm a developer advocate at TBD. And we're going to go through a couple of things today. We're going to first talk about TBDEX, which is a method um, that TBD is implementing to transform the payments industry. We'll talk about performing KYC on the TVDEX network using verifiable credentials. And we'll talk about a couple of methods for storing data. So it's not gonna to be too long of a talk because I wanna make sure I have time for you all to ask questions. So first off, I mentioned TVDEX. What is TVDEX? Um, and the way that I would, I would describe it, it's an open source messaging service that enables wallet applications to communicate with financial institutions to discover and obtain liquidity. In other words, like there's a lot of words, right? But in other words, it's a SDK or a software development kit that provides a shared uniform language between wallet apps and financial institutions so that financial institutions can offer liquidity or available cash to its customers. And this in turn makes sending money across borders seamless. So when I say sending money across borders seamless with these participating financial institutions, imagine this, right? I'm in Massachusetts and I hired an amazing graphic designer in Nigeria. 
I want to send them $500 for their work because that's what they charge. But after writing this, I'm like, that's kind of low. I should have put maybe a thousand. But let's just say they said they like send me $500. And typically this would involve like multiple steps, high fees, sometimes a few headaches because the money needs to get converted into their currency like Naira. And that can take a bit of time and it can be expensive. This actually happened to me where I asked my friend like, hey, can you make me some designs for this open source project? And he said, yeah, I would love to. But then he thought I didn't pay him. But it was just that there was some kind of holdup between my bank and his bank. Um, and I ended up having to pay him through a friend of a friend. And it was very like overwhelming, right? So instead, you can use the TVDEX network. You can open up your wallet app on the TVDEX network and you can see which participating financial institutions, or you might hear me refer to them as PFIs, can get your money to the designer quickly and for a more affordable price. I would think of it as maybe a financial superhighway that connects currencies to countries. Oops. So, Participating financial institutions using TV debts also have to make sure they're not just exchanging money with anybody or enabling exchanges of money with anyone shady, right? So remember how I told you when I bought my house, they were like, give me your driver's license. What are you, like, you added extra money to your bank account. What's going on? Like, they had to make sure everything was in place. This is the same for participating financial institutions on TV debts because they still have to follow different like compliance rules and regulations. Um, and they don't want to put their business at risk or anyone else that's using their business at risk. So they have to perform a KYC check, a know your customer check. But again, we've learned that the KYC process can be long and, and cumbersome, especially when it's done in a physical environment. Um, for me, when I had to buy my house, I was trying to find all these different documents. And then for some reason, they kept losing it. They were like, where's your bank statement from January? I'm like, I definitely send that like five times. But here it is again. <laughs> so to streamline things, the TVDEX ecosystem has implemented something called KCC, a known customer credential. And with KCC, you can wrap all that information, like your identity, financial history, trustworthiness, in a neat digital package. A known customer credential at its core is a verifiable credential. So you might be familiar with that term from past um, like uh, educational talks that DIP has done or anything else, but a verifiable credential is a cryptographic digital proof that is just proving something about a person. So in this case, our known customer credential is saying, hey, this person is legit, we've checked them out, they're good to go. And the purpose is that it's proving that the customer meets this KYC and sanction requirements. So we know that like they're meeting these compliance requirements, they're not on a sanctions list, they're not doing any terrorist or bribery or anything shady. And it basically is a provable expression of the result of a compliance process. So what's inside of this KCC? Inside of it, we'll have a decentralized identifier of the person who gave you this KCC. So we need a way to identify who is this person that issued you the KCC. That would be the issuer, right? Um, and we just want to make sure that it came from a place that we trust, like where the participating financial institution trusts, the, the customers, everybody involved. They're like, oh, yeah, I trust maybe the Department of Motor Vehicles or whoever it is that gave you that KCC. Then you have the issuance and expiration dates, basically just stating this is when you got the KCC and when you're going to need a new one. And then you'll have the credential subject. And that's all about you. It has your decentralized identifier proving that you're you and this is about you and your country of residence and maybe a few other details. And then you have an optional field for evidence. And that basically states like, hey, here's the checks that they did. Um, so maybe they did like a check for your passport or your two utility bills. And they did this through like document verification or whatever process or procedure they went through. Now that we have our KCC or our known customer credential, we want to know where do we store it? One suggested place is to store it in your mobile wallet. That way, anytime you do an interaction 
on the TV that this ecosystem is already in your phone, on your wallet, and you can just pull it up and perform any transactions. Another place you can store this is in your DWN or your decentralized web node. This is a data storage solution provided by the Web5 SDK that allows you to control who has access to your data. Right now, traditional methods of data storage that we use are like Google Drive, Dropbox. They're not really owned by us. We don't really think about it, but they're not owned by us. If these organizations like Google or Dropbox, and Google is known for changing stuff a lot, they change their terms of service or they kill uh, Google Drive for whatever reason, that will affect our access to our data. And then another thing that you might be familiar with when using the internet is that your data is often bought or sold without permission. So with a DWN, you can actually store and encrypt any data and specify who you want to have access to it. So perhaps you only want your data to be seen by your mom or your doctor, or your loan officer, or just yourself. You can specify that in a DWN. And what you will use to specify that is something called protocols. They help you to decide who has access to specific data in your DWN. And here's how it will look. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. It's just a JSON schema, like the word protocol sounds overwhelming, but it's really just JSON that specifies who can interact with specific data in your DWN and how. So in this example we have, we can see that, all right, for a post, anyone can create a post or update a post in my DWN, but only the author of the post can update or delete a comment, right? So that's the rules that you decided to give it. And I see it, uh, I think a comment here. Uh, will this be posted on YouTube? I don't know, but we can ask after. <laughs> All right. And next. So one thing to know when you're doing your challenge for a DAWN to abide by the rules you've set. So if like one person wants to interact with or store data or become an author or recipient in your DWN, they have to also install the protocol that you have because installing the protocol is essentially saying you agree to follow the rules that are set by that person's DWN. So all the rules that are set in this protocol, you're like, I'll install the protocol. And that means, yes, anyone who can create data or create a comment or post or whatever, and only the author can create a comment or delete a comment. So, so far, the things we've learned is that um, we've got the TV, de TV decks making global transactions smoother, right? We've got KCC proving that we're trustworthy and meet compliance requirements. And then we have learned about DWNs that keep our data secure. But what exactly does this mean for the real world? We can go back to our graphic designer friend in Nigeria. And with the system, he'll be able to, or will be able to send money to them quickly and for a price that, you know, we can afford. You, your friend receives it in a good amount of time. And then there's also that trust um, by using the KCC um, that you know the transaction is secure and compliant. Now, going beyond the examples I gave you today, in terms of me buying my house, in terms of us sending money to our designer friend in a different country, there's here's some other ideas that developers can use TVDEX to build solution for. I do wanna like heavily emphasize, these are not solutions that already exist. These are not solutions that TVD is saying they're gonna make. I'm just thinking of like, whoa, this is so cool of what TVDEX or any type of thing like this can possibly enable in the future. Maybe something like a global supply chain management where um, maybe the US, um, US manufacturers sourcing parts from suppliers in China and Germany and Brazil. And with things like KCCs and TVDEX, payments could be processed more instantly and reduce delays on shipments. Um, things like KYC checks or KCC checks can be made for new suppliers that can be completed in about a minute instead of days. And the entire supply chain system can have more of a transparent, verifiable record of transactions. 
Um, I'm also thinking of things like the freelance and gig economy. Um, maybe if you're in a different country, freelancers can receive payments uh, for their preferred currency without excessive conversion fees. I'm curious to anybody in the chat um, if there's anything that you would have loved to you would love to build with TVDEX now that you've learned about it. And I'll pause for a little bit. I bet y'all wasn't ready. Y'all wasn't thinking. But put your thinking cap on. Someone said universal login. Cool. Thank you, Mabel. <laughs> Let's see what else. Crowdfunding apps. Cool. Yeah, those are things. Definitely. Social media identity. Cool. Awesome. Now, Maybe so far you're like, oh, peer-to-peer remittance, yep. At a station protocol, the ultimate cross-border money transfer app. Yes, <laughs> not the ultimate. You're about, <laughs> you're about to have a, mon a monopoly. Haven't thought about cro crowdfunding, cross-border money transfer app. Yes, please, yeah. I definitely need that. As someone who has family in different countries, I, I don't like Western Union and like those places. I feel like, I don't know. I, it's just an overwhelming place to me. I don't like, I get overstimulated <laughs> and it's slow. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, so far we started thinking of different ideas. Maybe you're like me and you're getting excited and you're like, I want to get my hands dirty on this tech, right? Say, like, how do I try this out? Luckily, as you know, if you're, if you join this call, we're running a challenge for over the next month. And your challenge is, and this gives you experience with touching different parts of technologies that I mentioned, and your challenge will be to create a decentralized identifier and the WN to use as the issuer. You get bonus points if you use the diff community DWN instance that's hosted by Google Cloud. We got information about this in our documentation, just so you know. Um, then we want you to issue Alice a KCC that includes that evidence field that I talked about earlier. And note that for this challenge, you don't need to implement an actual identity verification flow. You can skip that part. Um, and then what the next thing is, you need to install a VC protocol onto your DWM. Remember I mentioned this is how you'll both agree to like the to terms of agreement of how your DWN will communicate with another one. You're like, yes, I agree that anyone can be able to put this in your DWN or this person can't delete or whatever it is. So you're gonna need to install that VC protocol so you can agree to those terms. And then you wanna obtain permission to write to Alice's DWN by sending a get request at this link and putting in your issuer did URI. And then you'll store the verifiable credential um, in JSON web token format of the known customer credential as a private record in Alice's DWN. So I'm excited to see what you all build with this, right? It's, I wanted to do a little demo, but that would give away the whole thing. So you all have heard kind of what these concepts mean and how they work. So it's up to you to kind of put it together. And I wanna let you know, as you complete your challenge, remember the future of finance isn't just about moving money, it's about moving barriers. And it's about creating a finance, a world where financial services are accessible, secure, and fair for everyone. Here's a couple of resources. They're included on the website too, but maybe if this is your first time like coming across this, um, these resources should help you get through the challenge. Our documentation is located at developer.tbd.website. Our YouTube channel, we talk a lot about a lot of these different concepts and you can get a deeper dive. Um, sometimes some people are live coding, like Daniel Buckner, he'll live code on our YouTube, and you'll go to youtube.com slash at tbd.videos. And if you have questions or need help, you can go to our Discord at discord.gg slash tbd, or Diff has a Discord as well with our TBD channel. Uh, that is it, and I'm going to be open to questions. A demo will be good for attendees, but then you all know how to do everything. <laughs> so I can't, I don't want to give it away. This is a pretty straightforward challenge. 
Let me see what else. Uh, they charge huge fees too. Yup. Not the org, but the transfer of money takes a long time. Over. Yup. That's true. Trying to make a game score thing. Cool. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't think I should do a demo because <laughs> that would just give away everything for you all. It's. It, this is up to you to really look through um, the documentation. How long can it take to send money? Seconds. I love that. It's not, okay, cool. Any other questions besides me demoing? I, I love doing demos, but I was like, all of this will really give away how it's going to go. Can we connect to a DWN instance? Yes, you can. Or are you saying, how can we? I'll put I'll put some documentation on the developer from the developer website on DWNs. Uh exit and let's find the DWN stuff. Okay. You most likely want to use Web5 Connect to connect to a DWN instance. I'm giving away too much already. So take that as a, you know. <laughs> All right, let's see. And, and we have links, like, thank you, Angie. Literally the whole challenge for each of those steps, we have a link pointing to each and everything. So it's really, I think it's spelled out. I think it's spelled out for you. Uh, yeah, so Lamari put the hackathon server. Oh. I didn't put this to Mabel. That's what I meant to do. Um, judging criteria, it could be found there. Thank you. Are there PFIs to interact with? So no, this, this hackathon challenge does not have PFIs to interact with. The last hackathon we did last month did, but this is not about interacting with PFIs. It's simply about what I told you, issuing a KCC and storing it in Alice, I mean, and storing it in a DWM. How effective and transparent is the ability for users to set their own rules for deletion on DWNs? Is there a record? Uh, it's very transparent. I don't know what you mean by a record, but once you have the protocols, um, that's that's like you you use your protocol to set up how these um records are being stored and all that, and there's it's encrypted by your decentralized identifier so you only have control over that and it shows you if you get things deleted can you explain or expand more on your question when you say is there a record okay. it's affected so, uh, mm -hmm. well, can I yeah. Just make my yeah okay so you know in blockchain technology uh, like decentralized web like this, um and the blockchain so basically i'm just like uh, so you got to delete a record maybe without, I mean, some kind of transparency. There's only some kind of transparency. Wait, I can't hear you. I was, I was trying, but I can't, you sound muffled. I don't know. Okay, let, let, let me change this. Is it better now? Yeah, it's a little better. Okay, so I was saying that I feel like when the user makes a deletion, of a record on the blockchain, there should be a history of that or something like that. Like mm. it shouldn't be like probably maybe let's say you are investing with a financial institution, the financial institution all of a sudden deletes a record that will affect you based on the rules they've set on the decentralized web node. Gotcha. So I'm not too familiar with blockchain, but in like web five world, you it's all your records are not just public to anybody to see all these different transactions that are happening. So if something was stored in a DWN, that would be just like trans. Well, you could set something, set up set a record for it to public, but it's all up to you, like you as the owner of how much you want people to see. And regularly, you wouldn't necessarily put your um like PFIs are not regularly interacting with your DWN on the TVDEX network. This is just how we're um deciding to do the 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 challenge to make it easier for folks. Does that make sense? Okay. 
Oh, okay, cool. You wrote, yes, it does. Assuming all of us can complete the required steps, how do I get that sweet TBD chatter? I guess that would be through dev and dev post. Um, I'm not, I don't know all the rules, y'all, for the, for the, like, how the hackathon is going beyond the actual technical parts of the challenge. So how you're getting the money and all that, I don't know. I think I should leave that to Lamari, maybe. Um, is that the question? Is it Austin? Is yeah. just how the prize money is distributed? Yeah. So that's what you're asking. It is through dev post. At the end, um, they distribute all the money. They have all the info about the prize winners and it goes out. I hope that answers your question. Oh, he's saying, how will he be differentiated? So, okay. <laughs> I thought you were like, how are you going to get the money and let they give it to you? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, well, if you do the challenge correctly and do the bonus uh, part of the challenge as well, then you get more points. Uh, although it's a very straightforward challenge, sometimes people don't always follow all the steps. So what's really important is making sure you get all those requirements checked off. Sorry about misunderstanding. Any more questions? And if you all want, I could just share the screen of, because I know y'all came for a dummy, but I could show y'all what happens if there's a tie. Hmm, I'm not sure. There has to be a rejudging process. It's like, um, so if you go to dev, if you're actually curious about how that whole thing works, if you go to dev post a section that says rules, there's a whole thing about what happens when there's a tie, if you want to go through that. But yeah, that's taken into account. Okay. Thank you. Good questions, y'all. I'll put the dev post thing in here as well. So you all can go to that and I'll show you all, like, let me share my screen. Uh, I'll bring this over here. So it can be bigger. Here. Okay, so this is the the place that Angie and others on my team have been linking. So we have the challenge, but also it we have a whole bunch of tools and resources. So if you're like, hmm, how do I create a did? We literally have how to create a did and DWN with Web5 Connect. So we really put a lot of stuff in there to help you out. That's why I didn't do a demo and I just kind of talked about the process. Cool. If there's no more questions, I can hand it back over. I hope y'all liked it and you're not bored. <laughs> <laughs> No, not at all. <laughs> it was a great session. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I agree, um, Tanya. It was an amazing session. Um, if you have any follow-up questions or you just think of something as soon as the session ends and you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to ask this. Um, I put the chat in the chat, the TBD channel. Uh, please let me know if you have any issues getting into that channel. Um, when you go into our server, you do have to select a role. So most people here would be hackers. Some people might be judges. Um, however, oh, thank you. Um, yeah. So in order to see like all the sponsor channels, you do have to uh, select a role first. Um, so uh, that is all that I have. We can go ahead and continue the discussion after in Discord. And then also this um, recording will be available very soon in the recordings channel in the server as well. So that's what I have. And unless there's any last questions that pop in here, I just want to thank everyone for coming and also for joining the hackathon as well. And thanks to everyone at TBD as well. Okay. All right. So I don't see any more questions. Um, so we can go ahead and continue the discussion offline. All right. See everyone. Bye, y'all. Right. Thanks. Bye.